In sooth, I know not why I am so sad. It wearies me. You say it wearies you, but how I caught it, found it, or came by it, what stuff it is made of, whereof it is born, I, I am to learn. And such a want wit sadness makes of me that I have much ado to know myself. Your mind is tossing on the ocean. There where your argosies of portly sail like seniors and rich burgers on the flood. Believe me, sir, had I such venture forth, the better part of my affections would be with my hopes abroad. I should be still plucking the grass to know where sits the wind, peering in maps for ports and piers and roads. And every object that might make me fear misfortune to my ventures out of doubt would make me sad. My wind cooling my broth would blow me to an ague, when I thought, what harm a wind too great at sea might do? But tell not me, I know Antonio is sad to think upon his merchandise. Believe me, no. I thank my fortune for it. My ventures are not in one bottom trusted, nor to one place, nor is my whole estate upon the fortune of the present year. Therefore, my merchandise makes me not sad. Why? Then you are in love. No, fine, fine, no. <laughs> okay, not in love neither. Then let us say you are sad because you are not merry, and twere as easy for you to laugh and leap and say you are merry because you are not sad. Hey! hey. Uh, yeah, here comes Bassanio, your most noble kinsman, Graziano and Lorenzo. Fare ye well. We leave you now with better company. I would have stayed till I'd made you marry if worthier friends had not prevented me. Uh, your your worth is very dear in my regard. I take it your uh, your own business calls on you, and you embrace the occasion to depart. <laughs> good morrow, my good lords. Ah, good signors both. When shall we laugh? Come on, say when. You grow exceedingly strange. Must it be so? Mm -hmm. We'll make our leisures to attend on yours. My Lord Bassanio, since you've found Antonio, we too will leave you. But at dinner time, I pray you, have in mind where we must meet. I will not fail you. You look not well, Signor Antonio. You have too much respect upon the world. They lose it that to buy it with much care. Believe me, you are marvelously changed. I hold the world, but as the world, Graciano, a stage where every man must play a part and mine a sad one. <laughs> let me play the fool. With mirth and laughter, let old wrinkles come and let my liver rather heat with wine than my heart cool with mortifying groans. Why should a man whose blood is warm within sit like his grandsire cut an alabaster, sleep when he wakes and creep into jaundice by being peevish? I tell thee what, Antonio, I love thee, I love thee. And it is my love that speaks, but fish not with this melancholy bait for this fool gudgeon, this opinion. Come, Lorenzo. Fare ye well a while, and I'll end my exhortation after dinner. Well, we will leave you then till dinner time. I must be one of these same dumb wise men, for Graciano never lets me speak. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, keep me company, but two years more, and thou shalt not know the sound of thine own voice. Farewell. I'll grow a talker for this year. <laughs> Thanks, in faith, for silence is only commendable, and a neat's tongue dried, and a maid not vendable. Eh. <laughs> is that anything, though? Ah, uh, Gratiano speaks an infinite deal of nothing, more than any man in all of Venice. Well, uh, tell me now what lady is the same to whom you swore to a secret pilgrimage that you today promised to tell me of. Right, well... Okay. Tis not unknown to you, Antonio, how much I have uh, disabled my estate by something showing a more swelling port than my faint means would uh, grant continuance. Nor do I now make moan to be abridged from such a noble rate, but my chief care is to come fairly off from the great depths wherein my time something too prodigal hath left me gauged. 
to you, Antonio, I owe the most in money and in love. And uh, from your love, I have a warranty to unburden all my plots and purposes, how to get clear of all the debts I owe. I pray you, good Bassanio, let me know it. And if it stand as you yourself still do within the eye of honor, be assured that my purse, my person, my extremist means lie unlocked to your occasions. In Belmont is a lady richly left and, oh, she is fair and fairer than that word of wondrous virtues. Sometimes from her eyes, I did receive fair speechless messages. Her name is Portia, nor is the wide world ignorant of her worth for the four winds blowing from every coast, renowned suitors and her sunny locks hang on her temples like a golden fleece. Mwah! Which, okay, makes her seat of Belmont Colcho's strand and many Jasons come in quest of her. Oh, my Antonio, how there but the means to hold a rival place with one of them. I have a mind presages me such thrift that I should questionless be fortunate. Thou knowest that all my fortunes are at sea. Neither have I money nor commodity to raise a present sum. Uh, therefore, go forth. Try what my credit can in Venice do. That shall be racked, even to the uttermost, to furnish thee to Belmont, to fair Portia. Go, presently inquire, and so will I, where money is, and I no question make to have it of my trust or for my sake. I did not even know that there was joy in life until I started playing video games. I am not even kidding. Like, pew pew, brain serotonin. Okay, kill a man, I like it. By my troth, Nerissa, my little body is aweary of this great world. <laughs> you would be, sweet madam, if your miseries were in the same abundance as your good fortunes are. And yet, for aught I see, they are as sick that surf fight with too much as they that starve with nothing. It is no mean happiness, therefore, to be seated in the mean. Superfluity comes sooner by white hairs, but competency lives longer. Good senses and well pronounced. Hmm. They would be better if well followed. It is a good divine that follows his own instructions. I can easier teach twenty. Well, we're good to be done than be one of the 20 to follow my own teaching. The brain may devise laws for the blood, but a hot temper leaps over a cold decree. But this reasoning is not in the fashion to choose me a husband. <laughs> ha! Oh me, the word choose. I may neither choose whom I would nor refuse whom I dislike. So is the will of a living daughter curbed by the will of a dead father. It is not hard, Nerissa, that I can not choose one or refuse none. Your father was ever virtuous, and holy men at their death have good inspirations. Therefore, the lottery that he hath devised in these three chests of gold, silver and lead, whereof who chooses his meaning chooses you, will no doubt never be chosen by any rightly by one who shall rightly love. I will do anything, Nerissa, ere I'll be married to a sponge. <laughs> you need not fear, lady. The having of these lords, they have acquainted me with their determinations, which is indeed to return them their home and to trouble you with no more suit, unless you may be won by some other sorts than your father's imposition, depending on the caskets. Oh, do you not remember, lady, in your father's time, a Venetian, a scholar and a soldier that came hither in company of the Marquis of Marifon? Yes, yes, it was Bassanio, as I think he was so called. True, madam. He, of all the men that ever my foolish eyes looked upon, was the best deserving of a fair lady. I remember him well, um, and I remember him worthy of thy praise. Uh, how now? What news? The four strangers seek for you, madam, to take their leave. And there is a forerunner come from a fifth, the Prince of Morocco, who brings word the prince his master will be here tonight. 
Come, Nerissa. Sura, go before. While we shut the gates upon one wooer, another knocks at the door. And then I was like, sorry, dude. You gotta go. 3,000 ducats. Well. I, ma'am, for three months. For three months. Well. For, for the which, as I told you, Antonio shall be bound. Antonio shall become bound. Well. May you stead me? Uh, will you pleasure me? Uh, shall, shall I know your answer? 3,000 ducats for three months and Antonio bound. Y yes, your, your answer to that. Antonio is a good man. Oh, have you heard any imputation to the contrary? Oh, no, no. My meaning in saying he is a good man is to have you understand me that he is sufficient. Yet his means are in supposition. He hath an argosy bound to Tripoli, another to the Indies. I understand, moreover, upon the Rialto he hath a third at Mexico, a fourth for England, and other ventures he hath squandered abroad. But ships are but boards, sailors but men, and then there is the peril of waters, winds, and rocks. The man is, notwithstanding, sufficient. Three thousand ducats. I think I may take his bond. Be assured you may. I will be assured I may, and that I may be assured I will bethink me. May I speak with Antonio? Well, if it please you to dine with us. Eh? I, I will buy with you, sell with you, talk with you, walk with you, and so following, but I will not eat with you, drink with you, nor pray with you. What news on the Rialto? Who is he comes here? Ah, this... This is Signor Antonio. How like a fawning publican he looks. Hey, Shylock, you who, you there? Yeah, you here? Come I on. am debating of my present store, and by the near guess of my memory, I cannot instantly raise up the gross of full 3,000 ducats. What of that? Tibble, a wealthy Hebrew of my tribe, will furnish me. But soft, how many months do you desire? Rest you fair, good senor. Your worship was the last man in our mouths. Shylock, although I neither lend nor borrow by taking nor giving of excess, yet to supply the ripe wants of my friend, I'll break a custom. Is he yet possessed how much he would? I, I, uh, 3,000 ducats. And for three months? I had forgot. Three months, you told me so. Well then, your bond, and let me see, but hear you. Methought you said you neither lend nor borrow upon advantage. I do never use it. When Jacob grazed his uncle Laban's sheep, this Jacob from our holy Abram was, as his wise mother wrought in his behalf, the third possessor, I he was the third. Mark you this, Bassanio. The devil can cite scripture for her purpose. An evil soul producing holy witness is like a villain with a smiling cheek, a goodly apple rotten at the heart. Oh, what a goodly outside falsehood have. 3,000 ducats. Tis a good round sum. Three months from 12, then let me see the rate. Well, Shylock, shall we be beholding to you? Signor Antonio. Many a time and oft in the Rialto you have rated me about my monies and my usances. Still, I have borne it with a patient shrug, for sufferance is the badge of all our tribe. You call me misbeliever, cutthroat dog, and spit upon my Jewish gabardine, and all for use of that which is mine own. Well then, it now appears you need my help. Go to. You, you come to me and you say, Shylock, we would have monies, you say so, you, that did void your room upon my beard and foot me as you spurn a stranger cur over your threshold. Monies is your suit. What should I say to you? Should I not say, hath a dog money? Is it possible a cur can lend 3,000 ducats? Or shall I bend low and in a bondsman's key with bated breath and whispering humbleness, say this. Fair sir, 
You spit on me on Wednesday last, you spurned me such a day. Another time you called me dog, and for these courtesies I'll lend you thus much monies. I am as like to call thee so again, to spit on thee again, to spurn thee too. If thou wilt lend this money, lend it not as to thy friends. For when did friendship take a breed for barren metal of his friend? But rather, lend it to thine enemy, who, if he break, thou mayst with better face exact the penalty. Why, look you how you storm. I would be friends with you and have your love. Forget the shames that you have stained me with. Supply your present wants and take no doit of usance for my monies, and you'll not hear me. This is kind, I offer. Oh, this, this more kindness. This, this, this kindness will I show. Go with me to a notary. Seal me there your single bond, and in a merry sport, if you repay me not on such a day, in such a place, such sum or sums as are expressed in the condition, let the forfeit be nominated for an equal pound of your fair flesh to be cut off and taken in what part of your body so pleaseth me. <laughs> that's, oh, dude, that, that's, that's really funny, Sean. Fuck, you're a funny gal. You know, that's a, that's a good joke that you got there. Hmm. Content, if faith, I'll seal to such a bond and say that there is much kindness in the Jew. You, you shall not seal to such a bond for me. I'll rather dwell on my necessity. Why, fear not, man. I will not forfeit it. Within these two months, that's a month before this bond expires, I do expect return of thrice three times the value of this bond. I say, to buy his favor, I extend this friendship. If you will take it, so... If not, adieu. And for my love, I pray you wrong me not. Yes, Shylock, I will seal unto this bond. Then meet me forthwith at the notary's. Give him direction for this merry bond, and I will go and purse the ducat straight. See to my house, left in the fearful guard of an unthrifty knave, and presently I will be with you. Hi thee, gentle Jew. The Hebrew will turn Christian. She grows kind. I like not fair terms in a villain's mind. Come on, in this there can be no dismay. My ships come home a month before the day. I tell thee, lady, this aspect of mine hath feared the valiant. By my love, I swear, the best-regarded virgins of our clime have loved it, too. 
In terms of choice, I'm not solely led by nice direction of a maiden's eyes. Besides, the lottery of my destiny bars me the right of voluntary choosing. <laughs> but if my father had not scanted me and hedged me of his wit, <clears throat> pardon me, to yield myself his wife who wins me by that means I told you. Hmm, even for that, I thank you. Therefore, I pray you, lead me to the caskets to try my fortune. By this scimitar that slew the Sophie and the Persian prince. I, I would outstare the sternest eyes that look, outbrave the heart most dancing on the earth, pluck the young sucking cubs from the she bear, yea, mock the lion when he roars for prey to win thee, lady. You must take your chance and either not attempt to choose at all or swear before you choose. If you choose wrong, never speak to lady afterwards. In ways of marriage, therefore, be advised. Nor will not. Now I bring me unto my chance. First, forward to the temple. After dinner, your hazard shall be made. Good fortune, then, to make me blessed or cursed amongst men. Certainly my conscience will serve me to run from this Jew, my master. The fiend is at mine elbow and tempts me, saying to me, Gobo, Lancelot Gobo, good Lancelot or good Gobo, use your legs, take the start, run away. My conscience says, no, take heed, honest Lancelot, take heed, honest Gobo. Or as the fourth said, honest Lancelot Gobo, do not run, scorn running with thy heels. Well, the most courageous fiend bids me peck. Via, says the fiend, away, says the fiend, for the heavens rouse up a brave mind, says the fiend, and run. Well, my conscience hanging about the neck of my heart says very wisely to me, my honest friend Lancelot, being an honest man's son, or rather an honest woman's son, for indeed my father did something smack, something grow to, he had a kind of taste. Well, my conscience says, Lancelot, budge not. Budge, says the fiend, budge not says my conscience, conscience say I, you counsel well. Fiend say I, you counsel well. To be ruled by my conscience, I should stay with the Jew, my master. Fiend gives the more friendly counsel. I will run, fiend, my heels are at your command. I will run. Master young man, you, I pray you, which is the way to master Jews? This is my true begotten father, who, being more than sand blind, I gravel blind, knows me not. I will try confusions with him. Uh, ma master young gentleman, I pray you, which is the way to uh, master Jew? Turn up on your right hand at the next turning. But at the very, at the next turning of all, on your left, Mary, at the very next turning, turn of no hand, but turn down indirectly to the Jew's house. Uh, but by God, Santis, twill be a hard way to hit. C can you tell me whether one Lancelot that dwells with him, dwell with him or, or no? Talk you of young Master Lancelot? Mark me now, now will I raise the waters. Talk you with young master Lancelot? Of Lancelot, and please your mastership. Ergo, master Lancelot, talk not of master Lancelot, father, for the young gentleman, according to the fates and the destinies, and such odd sayings, the sisters three in such branches of learning is indeed 
deceased. Or as you would say in plain terms, gone to heaven. <gasps> Mary, God forbid. The boy was the very staff of my age, my very prop. Do I look like a cudgel or a hubble post? A staff or a prop? Do you know me, father? Alack the day, I know you not, young gentleman. But I pray you, tell me, is this, is my boy, God rest his soul, alive or dead? Do you not know me, father? Alack, sir, I am sand blind, I know you not. Pray you, let's have no more fooling about it, but give me your blessing. I am Lancelot, your boy that was, your son that is, your child that shall be. I cannot think you are my son. I know not what I shall think of that, but I am Lancelot, the Jew's man, and I'm sure Marjorie, your wife, is my mother. Her name is Marjorie, indeed. I'll be sworn if thou be Lancelot, thou art my own flesh and blood. Lord worshipped might he be. What a beard hast thou got? Lord, how art thou changed? How dost thou and thy master agree? I have brought him a present. How agree you now? Well, well, but for my own part, as I have set up my rest to run away, so I will not rest till I have run some ground. Father, I am glad you are come. Give me your present to one Master Bassanio, who indeed gives rare new liveries. If I serve not him, I will run as far as God has any ground. Oh, rare fortune, here comes the man. To him, father. You may do so, but let it be so that hasted that supper be ready at the farthest by five of the clock. See these letters delivered, put the liveries to the making, and desire Graziano to come anon to my lodging. All right. To him, father. God bless your worship. Gramercy, wouldst thou walk with me? Come on. Here's my son, sir, a poor boy. Not a poor boy, sir, but the rich Jews man. That would, sir, as my father shall specify. He, he hath a great infection, sir. Well, as one would say, to serve. To be brief, the very truth is that the Jew, having done me wrong, doth cause me as my father being, I hope, an old man shall fruitify unto you. I have a dish of doves that I would bestow upon you, your worship, and is, my suit is. That one speak for both. What would you? Serve you, sir. That is the very defect of the matter, sir. I know thee well. Thou hast obtained thy suit. Shylock, thy master, spoke with me this day, and hath preferred thee, if it be preferment to leave a rich Jew's service to become the follower of so poor a gentleman. The old proverb is very well parted between my master Shylock and you. Sir, you have the grace of God, sir, and he hath enough. Hmm. Thou speakest it well. Go, father, with thy son. Take leave of thy old master and inquire my lodging out. Give him a livery more guarded than his fellows. See it done. Father, come, I'll take my leave of the Jew in the twinkling of an eye. Hey! Hey! Signor Bassanio! Gratiano! I have a suit to you. Aha, you have obtained it. <laughs> you must not deny me. I must go with you to Belmont. Oh, well, then you must, but... Hear thee, Gratiano, thou art too wild, too rude, and too bold of voice. Pray thee, take pain to allay with some cold drops of modesty thy skipping spirit, lest through thy wild behavior I be misconstrued in the place I go and lose my hope. <laughs> nay, nay, but I bar tonight. Uh, you shall not gauge me by what we do tonight. No, 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 that were pity. I would entreat you rather to put on your boldest suit of mirth, for we have friends that purpose merriment, but fare you well. I have some business. And I must to Lorenzo and the rest, but we'll visit you at supper time. I 
I am sorry thou wilt leave my mother so. Her house is hell, and thou, a merry devil, didst rob it of some taste of tediousness. But fare thee well. There is a ducat for thee. And, Lancelot, soon at supper shalt thou see Lorenzo, who is thy new master's guest. Give him this letter. Do it secretly, and so farewell. I would not have my mother see me and talk with thee. Two tears exhibit my tongue, most beautiful pagan, most sweet chew. If a Christian did not play the knave and get thee, I am much deceived. But to do, these foolish drops do something drown my manly spirit. Adieu. Farewell, good Lancelot. Alack. Heinous sin is it in me to be ashamed to be my mother's child. Though I am a daughter to her blood, I am not to her manners. Lorenzo, if thou keep promise, I shall end this strife, become a Christian and thy loving wife. Nay, we will slink away in supper time, disguise us at my lodging and return all in an hour. We have not made good preparation. We have not spoke as yet of torchbearers. Tis vile, unless it may be quaintly ordered, and better in my mind not undertook. Tis now but four o'clock. We have two hours do, to do, 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 Oh, friend Lancelot, what's the news? And it shall please you to break up this. It shall seem to signify. Well, I know the hand. In faith, tis a fair hand. Love news in faith. Uh, hold here. Uh, take this. Tell gentle Jessica I will not fail her. Speak it privately. Go, gentlemen. <coughs> Freaking bourgeoisie. Will you prepare you for the mask tonight? I am provided of a torchbearer. Aye, Mary. I'll be gone about it straight. And so will I. Meet me in Graciano at Graciano's lodging some hour hence. Tis good we do so. Was not that letter from fair Jessica? I must need tell thee all. She hath directed how I shall take her from her mother's house, what gold and jewels she is furnished with, what pages shoot she hath in readiness. If ere the Jew or her mother come to heaven, it will be for her gentle daughter's sake. And never dare misfortune cross her foot, unless she do it under this excuse, that she is issued to a faithless Jew. Come. Go with me, peruse this as thou goest. For Jessica shall be my torchbearer. Oh. Hey, what's a guy got to do to get a white claw around here? Go on. Well, thou shalt see, thy eyes shall be thy judge, the difference of old Shylock and Bassanio. What? Jessica? Thou shalt not gormandize as thou hast done with me. What? Jessica? And sleep and snore and rend apparel out. Why, Jessica, I say. Why, Why Jessica? Jessica? Who bids thee call? I do not bid thee call. Your worship was wont to tell me that I could do nothing without bidding. Call you? What is your will? I am bid forth to supper, Jessica. There are my keys. But wherefore should I go? I am not bid for love, they flatter me. Jessica, my girl, look to my house. I am right loath to go. There is some ill a brewing towards my rest. I beseech you, ma'am, go. My own master doth expect your reproach. So do I, his. And they have conspired together. I will not say you shall see a mask. What? 
There are masks? Hear you, me, Jessica. Lock up my doors. And when you hear the drum and the vile squealing of the wry-necked fife, clamor not you up to the casements then, nor thrust your head into the public street to gaze on Christian fools with varnished faces, but stop my house's ears. I mean my casements. Let not the sound of shallow foppery enter my sober house. By Jacob's staff, I swear, I have no mind of feasting forth tonight. But I will go. Go you before me, Sirrah. Say I will come. I will go before, ma'am. Mistress, look out at the window. For all of this, there will come a Christian boy who will be worth a Jewess's eye. What says that fool of Hagar's offspring, huh? His words were, farewell, mistress, nothing else. The patch is kind enough, but a huge feeder, snail slow and profit, and he sleeps by day more than the wild cat. Drones hives not with me. Therefore, I part with him, and part with him to one that would have him help to waste his borrowed purse. Well, Jessica, go in. Perhaps I will return immediately. Do as I bid you. Shut doors after you. Fast bind, fast find. A proverb never stale in thrifty mind. Farewell. And if my fortune be not crossed, I have a mother, you a daughter lost. This is the penthouse under which Lorenzo desired us make stand. His hour is almost past. <laughs> and he, it's a marvel he had pools his hour for lovers ever run before the clock. Oh, ten times faster Venus's pigeons fly to seal love's bonds new maids and they are one to keep obliged faith unforfeited. <laughs> that ever holds. Who rises from a feast with that same appetite at which he sat down? <laughs> All things that are are with more spirit chased than enjoyed. Here comes Lorenzo, more of this hereafter. Ah, oh, sweet friends, your patience for my long abode, not I, but my affairs have made you wait. When you shall please to play the thieves for wives, I'll watch it as long for you then. Approach. Here dwells my father Jew. Ho, oh, who's within? Who are you? Tell me for more certainty, albeit I'll swear that I do know your tongue. Uh, Lorenzo, and thy love. <sighs> Lorenzo, certain, and my love indeed. For who love I so much? And now, who knows but you, Lorenzo, whether I am yours? Heaven and thy thoughts are witness that thou art. Here, catch this casket. It is worth the pains. Descend, uh, for you must be my torchbearer. So are you, sweet, even in the lovely garnish of a boy, but come at once, for the close night doth play the runaway, and we are stayed for at Bassanio's feast. I will make fast the doors and gild myself with some more ducats, and be with you straight. Now, by my hood, a Gentile and no Jew, Beshrew me, but I love her heartily, for she is wise, and if I can judge of her, and fair she is, if my eyes be true, and true she is, as she has proved herself, and therefore, like herself, wise, fair, and true, shall she be placed in my constant heart. What art thou come? On, gentlemen, away. Our masking mates for us stay. All right. All right. Time to become a TikTok sensation. <laughs> Gotta get the product placement. Let's go, boys.
I'll eat you up. Whenever you tell me I'm pretty, that's when the hunger really hits me. I'll make your heart go patter, patter. I will deliver on a platter. Use your finger, stir my tea, and for dessert, I'll... Who's there? Senor Antonio! Hey! Bye, bye, Graciano! Where are all the rest? It's nine o'clock. All of our friends stay for you. No mask, no TikTok tonight. The oh. wind has come about. Bassanio presently will go aboard. I have sent 20 out to seek for you. Mm, it's cool. I'm glad on it. I desire no more to light than to be at sea and gone tonight. These people TikTok, I swear to God. Close one. Go draw aside the curtains and discover the several caskets to the noble prince. Now make your choice. How, how shall I know if I do choose the right? One of them contains my picture, prince. If you choose that, then I'm yours with all. Hmm. Some god direct my judgment. Okay, let me see. I will survey the inscriptions back again. What says this leaden casket? Okay. Who chooseth me must give and hazard all he hath. Must give for, for, for what? For lead. Hazard for lead. This casket threatens. What says the silver with her virgin hue? Who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves. As much as he deserves. Eh, pause, pause there, Morocco. And weigh thy value with an even hand. As much as I deserve. Why, that's the lady. Eh, let's see. See once more this saying graved in gold. Who chooseth me shall gain what many men desire. Why, that's the lady. All the world desires her. From the four corners of the earth they come. Is it like lead contains her? Toward damnation to think so base a thought. Or shall I think in silver she's immured, being ten times undervalued to try it gold? Ah, oh, sinful thought. Never so rich a gem was set in worse than gold. Deliver me the key. Here do I choose and thrive as I may. There, take it, Prince. And if my form lie there, then I am all yours. Suckably, yet what have we here? A carrion death within whose empty eye there is a written scroll. Ah, I'll read the writing. All that glitters is not gold. Often that you have been told. Many a man his life hath sold, but my outside to behold. Gilded tombs do worms unfold, had you been as wise as bold. Young in limbs in judgment old, your answer had not been in scroll. Very well, your suit is cold, cold indeed, and labor lost. Then farewell, heat and welcome frost. All right. Portia, adieu. I have to grieve the heart to take a tedious leave, and thus losers part. A gentle riddance. Draw the curtains, go. Let all of his arrogance choose me so. Why man, I saw Bassanio under sail. With him is Graziano gone along and in their ship, I am sure Lorenzo is not. The villain Jew with outcries raised the duke who went with him to search Bassanio's ship. He came too late. The ship was under sail. 
but there the Duke was given to understand that in a gondola were seen together Lorenzo and his amorous Jessica. Besides, Antonio certified the Duke. They were not with Bassanio in his ship. <laughs> oh, I never heard a passion so confused, so strange, outrageous, and, and so variable as the dog Jew did utter in the streets. Uh, my daughter, oh my ducats, oh my daughter fled with a Christian. Oh my Christian ducats, justice, the law, my ducats, and my daughter. <laughs> Like, all the boys in Venice follow her, crying, her stones, her daughter, and her ducats. Oh, let good Antonio look he keep his day, or he shall pay for this. Mary, well remembered. I reasoned with a Frenchman yesterday, who told me, in the narrow seas that part, the French and English, there miscarried a vessel of our country richly fraught. I thought upon Antonio when he told me, and wished in silence that it were not his. You were best to tell Antonio what you hear, yet do not suddenly, for it may grieve him. A kinder gentleman treads not the earth. I saw Bassanio and Antonio part. Bassanio told him he would make some speed of his return, and he answered, Do not so, slubber not business for my sake, Bassanio, but stay the very ripening of the time. And for the Jew's bond which he hath of me, let it not enter in your mind of love. Be merry and employ your cheapest thoughts to, to courtship and such fair ostents of love. I shall conveniently become you there. And even there, his eye being big with tears, turning his face, he put his hand behind him. And with affection, wondrous sensible, he wrung Bassanio's hand. And so they parted. I think... He only loves the world for him. <laughs> I, I, I pray thee, uh, let us go and find him out and quicken his embraced heaviness with some delight or other. Do we so? Quick, quick, I pray thee, draw the curtain straight. The Prince of Aragon hath taken his oath and comes to his election presently. G'day, g'day, g'day. Uh Behold, there stands the caskets, noble prince. If you choose that wherein I am contained, straight shall our nuptial rites be solemnized. But if you fail without more speech, my lord, you must be gone from hence immediately. I'm enjoined by oath to observe three things. First, never to unfold to anyone which casket was I chose. Next, if I fail of the right casket, never in my life to woo a maid in way of marriage. Lastly, if I do fail in fortune of my choice, immediately to leave you and be gone. To these injunctions, everyone doth swear that comes to hazard for my worthless self. And so I have addressed me. Fortune out of my heart's hope. Gold, silver, and base lid. Uh, who chooseth me must give and hazard all he hath. Eh, you shall look fairer ere I give or hazard. What says the golden chess? Ah, let me see. Who chooseth me shall gain what many men desire. Eh, what many men desire. That, that many may be meant by the full multitude that choose by show. I will not choose what many men desire because I will not jump with the common spirits and rank me with the barbarous multitudes. Why then to thee, thou silver treasure house? Tell me once more what title thou dost bear. Who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves. And well said too. For who shall go about to cousin fortune and honorable without the stamp of merit? Let none presume to wear an undeserved dignity. Oh, that estates, degrees, and offices were not derived corruptly and that clear honor were purchased by the merit of the wearer. Right, well, but to my choice. Who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves. I will assume does it. Give me a key for this and instantly unlock my fortunes here. Too long a pause for that which you find there. Oh god, what, what, what is this? <clears throat> What's here? The portrait of a blinking idiot presenting me a schedule? Ah, god. okay, I'll read it, I'll read it. Who chooseth me shall have as much as he deserves. Did, did I deserve no more than a fool's head? Is that my prize? Are my deserts no better? To offend and judge are distinct offices and of opposed natures. Oh, what's here? 
The fire seven times tried this. Seven times tried that judgment is that never did choose a miss. Some there be that shadows kiss, such have but a shadow's bliss. There be fools alive, I wist, silvered o'er, and so was this. Take what wife you will to bed, I will ever be your head. So be gone, you are sped, still more fool, I shall appear by the time I linger here. With one fool's head I came to woo, but I go away with two. Sweet ado, I'll keep my oath patiently to bear my wrath. All right, fuck off. <laughs> Thus hath the candle singed the moth. Oh, these deliberate fools. When they do choose, they have the wisdom by their wit to lose. <laughs> The ancient saying is no heresy. Hanging and wiping goes by destiny. Come, draw the curtain, Nerissa. Where is my lady? Here, uh, what would my lord? Madame, there is alighted at your gate a young Venetian, one who comes before to signify the approaching of his lord. <gasps> Come, come, Nerissa, for I long to see quick Cupid's post that comes so mannerly. <laughs> Sanyo, Lord, love, if thy will it be. Now, what news on the Rialto? Why, yet it lives there unchecked, that Antonio hath the ship of rich lady wrecked on the narrow seas. Uh, the good winds, I think they call the place. A very dangerous, flat, and fatal, where the carcasses of many a tall ship lie buried, as they say, if my gossip report be an honest woman of her word. But it is true, without any slips of prolixity or crossing the plain highway of talk, the good Antonio, the honest Antonio, that I had a title good enough to keep his name company. Come, come, the full stop. <laughs> what sayest thou? Why, the end is... He had lost a ship. I would, it might prove the end of his losses. Let me say amen, the times, lest the devil cross my prayer, for here she comes in the likeness of a Jew. Oh, how now, Shylock? What news amongst the merchants? You know none so well, none so well as you, of my daughter's flight. That's certain. I, for my part, knew the tailor that made the wings she flew with all. Uh, and Shylock, for her own part, knew the bird was fledged, and that it is the complexion of them all to leave the dam. She is damned for it. Uh, that's certain, if the devil may be her judge. <laughs> my own flesh and blood to rebel. Oh, out upon it, old Karen. <laughs> Rebels it at these years? <laughs> I say! My daughter is my flesh and my blood. There is more difference between thy flesh and hers than between jet and ivory. More between your bloods than there is between red wine and Rhenish. Uh, but tell us, do you hear whether Antonio have had any loss at sea or no? There I've had another bad match, a bankrupt prodigal who dare scarce show his head on the Rialto, a beggar that was used to come so smug upon the mart, let him look to his bond. He was wont to call me usurer, let him look to his bond. He was wont to call to lend money, to lend money for a Christian courtesy. Let him look to his bond. I, I'm sure if he forfeit, that will not take his flesh. What's that good for? To bait fish with all. If it will feed nothing else, it will feed my revenge. He hath disgraced me and hindered me. Half a million laughed at my losses, mocked at my gains, scorned my nation, thwarted my bargains, cooled my friends, heeded mine enemies. And what's his reason? I am a Jew. Hath not a Jew eyes? Hath not a Jew hands, organs? Dimensions, senses, affections, passions. Fed with the same food. Hurt with the same weapons, subject to the same diseases. Healed by the same means. Warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer as a Christian is. 
if you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, <laughs> do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? And if you wrong us, shall we not revenge? If we are like you in the rest, we will resemble you in that. If a Jew wrong a Christian, what is his humility? Revenge. If a Christian wrong a Jew, what should a sufferance be by Christian example? Why? Revenge. The villainy you teach me, I will execute. And it shall go hard, but I will better the instruction. Here comes another of the tribe. Oh, third cannot be matched unless the devil disguise himself a Jew. How oh, now, Tibble, what news from Genoa? Hast thou found my daughter? I often came where I did hear of her, but I cannot find her. Other men have ill luck too. Antonio, as I heard, in Genoa. What, what? Ill luck? Ill luck? Hath an Argosy cast away coming from Tripoli. Oh, I thank God. I thank God. Is it, is it true? Is it true? I spoke with some sailors that escaped the wreck. I thank thee, good Tibble. Good news, good news. Ha, huh. where? Where, in, in, in Genoa? Your daughter spent in Genoa, as I heard, in one night, four score ducats. Thou stickest a dagger in me. I shall never see my gold again. Four score ducats in a city. Four score ducats. There came divers of Antonio's creditors in my company to Venice. They swear that he cannot choose but break. I am very glad of it. I'll plague him. I'll torture him. I'm very glad of it. One of them showed me a ring that he had of your daughter for a monkey? Out upon her. Thou torturest me, Tibble. It was my turquoise. I had it of Liam when I was a bachelorette. I would not have given it for a wilderness of monkeys. But Antonio is certainly undone. Nay, nay, that's true. That's very true. Go, Tibble. Find me an officer. Speak him a fortnight before. I will have the heart of him if he forfeit, for were he out of Venice, I can make what merchandise I will. Go. Go, Tibble, and meet me at our synagogue. Go, oh, good Tibble, at our synagogue, Tibble.
I pray you, Terry, pause a day or two before you hazard, for in choosing wrong, I lose your company. Therefore, forbear a while. There's something tells me, but it is not love. I would not lose you. Let me choose, for as I am, I live upon the rack. Upon the rack, Basadio. Then confess what treason there is mingled with your love. Oh, none, none, but that ugly treason of mistrust, which makes me fear the enjoying of my love. There may as well be amity and life between snow and fire as treason and my love. I, but I fear you speak upon the rack where men in force do speak anything. Hmm. Promise me life and I'll confess the truth. Well done. Confess and live. I uh, confess and love had been the very sum of my confession. Oh, happy torment, when my torturer doth teach me answers for deliverance. But let me to my fortune and the caskets. Away then. I am locked in one of them. If you do love me, you will find me out. Nerissa and the rest. Nerissa and the rest, all stand aloof. Let music sound while he doth make his choice. <clears throat> Tell me, where is fancy bread? Or is it in the heart or is it in the, the head? How begot, how nourished, reply, reply. It is engendered in the eyes with gazing fed and fancy dies in the cradle where it lies. Let us all ring fancy's knell. I'll begin it. Sing, dog, bell. Okay, ready? Okay. One, two, three. Ding, Ding dong, bell. bell. All right, I'm, I'm not going to read into that one. So may the outward shows be least themselves. The world is still deceived with ornament. There is no vice so simple but assume some mark of virtue on his outward parts. Therefore thou gaudy gold, hard full for Midas, I will none of thee. Nor none of thee, thou pale and common drudge between man and man. Uh, but thou... Thou oh, meagre lead, which rather threaten this than thus promise aught, thy paleness moves me more than eloquence. And here choose I, joy be the consequence. How all the other passions fleet to air, as doubtful thoughts and rash of race despair, shuddering fear and green-eyed jealousy. Will love be moderate? Lay thy ecstasy, and measure rain thy joy, scant this excess. I feel too much thy blessing, make it less, for I fear I surpass. <laughs> okay, what find they here? Fair Porsche's counterfeit! There we go! That's how we do it, boys! Yeah, let's get down to business! You defeat the Huns! Woo! Yeah, what demigod hath come so near creation? Here in her hairs, the painter plays the spider and hath woven a golden mesh to entrap the hearts of men faster than gnats in cobwebs. Here's the scroll, the continent and summary of my fortune. You that choose not by the view, chance as fair and choose as true. Since this fortune falls to you, be content and seek no new. If you be well pleased with this, hold your fortune for your bliss. Turn you now where your lady is and claim her with a loving kiss. A gentle scroll. Fair lady, by your leave, I come by note to give and to receive. This house, these servants, and the same myself are yours, my lord. I give them with this ring, which when you part from, lose, or give away, let it presage the ruin of your love. To my vantage to exclaim on you. Madam, you have bereft me of all my words. Only my blood speaks to you in my veins, and there is such confusion in my powers as after some oration fairly spoke by a... Oh, beloved prince. <clears throat> there doth appear among the buzzing, please, multitude, where every something being blent together turns to a wild of nothing save of joy expressed and not expressed. But when this ring parts from this finger, then parts life from hence. I'll then be bold to say Bassanio is dead. My lord and lady, it is now our time that have stood by and seen our wishes prosper to cry good joy, good joy, my lord and lady. My lord Bassanio 
and my gentle lady, I wish you all the joy that you can wish. For I am sure you can wish none from me. And when your honors mean to solemnize the bargain twixt you twain, I do beseech you that even at that time I may be married too. With all my heart, so thou canst get a wife. <laughs> I thank your lordship. You have got me one. My eyes, my lord, can look as swift as yours. You saw the mistress. I beheld the maid. <laughs> you loved. I loved for intermission. No more pertains to me, my lord, than you. Your fortune stood upon that casket there, and so did mine, too. As the matter falls for wooing here until I sweat again, and sweating until my very roof was dry, <laughs> With oaths of love, at last, if promise last, I got a promise of this fair one here to have her love provided that your fortunate achieve her mistress. Is this true, Nerissa? <laughs> Madam, it is. <laughs> so you stand pleased with the all. And uh, do you, Gratiano, mean good faith? What? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, faith, my lord, yep. Mm, ah, <laughs> excellent, our feast shall be much honored in your marriage. We'll play with them, first boy for a thousand ducats. <laughs> what, and stake down? No, we shall never win at that sport and stake down. <laughs> but who comes here, Lorenzo? <laughs> what, and my old Venetian friend Salarino? Lorenzo and Salarino, welcome hither. If that the youth of my new interest here have power to bid you welcome, by your leave, I bid my very friends and countrymen, sweet Portia, welcome. Why, my lord, they are entirely welcome. I thank you, my honor, my honor, for my part, my lord. My purpose was not to have seen you here, but meeting with Salerino, by the way, she didn't entreat me past all saying nay to come with her along. I did, my lord, and I have reason for it. Signor Antonio commends him to you. Ah, okay. Ere I open his letter, I pray you, tell me how my good friend doth. Not sick, my lord, unless it be in mind, nor well, unless in mind. His letter there will show you his estate. Nerissa, cheer yon stranger, bid her welcome. Your hand, Salarino. What's the news from Venice? How doth that royal merchant good Antonio? I know he will be glad of our success. We are the Jasons. We have won the fleece. I would you had won the fleece that he hath lost. Okay. Uh, there is some shrewd contents in your sane paper. Marissa cut off the stream. That steals the color from Bassanio's cheek. Some dear friend dead, else nothing in the world could turn so much the constitution of any constant man. What, worse and worse? With leave, Bassanio, mm. I'm half yourself, and I must freely have the half of anything that the same paper brings you. Sweet Portia, here are a few of the unpleasantest words that ever blotted paper. Gentle lady, when, <clears throat> when I did first impart my love to you, I... I freely told you all the wealth I had ran in my veins. I, I was a gentleman. And, and then I told you true. And, and yet, dear lady, rating myself at nothing, you shall see how much I was a braggart. For when I told you my state was nothing, I should then have told you that it was worse for nothing. For indeed, I have engaged myself to a dear friend, engaged my friend to his mere enemy to feed my means. Here's a letter, lady, a paper as a body of my friend, and every word in it a gaping wound issuing lifeblood. But but is it true, Salarino? Have all of his ventures failed? Not, not one hit. From Tripoli to Mexico and England. From Lisbon, Barbary, India, not one. And not one vessel escaped the dreadful touch of merchant marring rocks? Not one, my lord. <sighs> Besides it, it should appear that if he had the present money to discharge the Jew, she would not take it. Never did I know a creature that did bear shape of a man so keen and greedy to confound a man. She plies the duke at morning and at night and doth impeach the freedom of the state. If they deny her justice, 20 merchants, 
The Duke himself and the Magnificos of greatest part have all persuaded with her, but none can drive her from the envious plea of a forfeiture of justice and her bond. When I was with her, I've heard her swear to Tubal and to shoe her countrymen, that she would rather have Antonio's flesh than 20 times the value of the son that he did owe him. And I know, my lord, that if law and authority and power deny not, it will go hard with poor Antonio. Is it your dear friend that is thus in trouble? Oh, the dearest friend to me, the, the kindest man, the best conditioned and unwearied spirit in doing courtesies, and one in whom the ancient Roman honor more appears than any that draws breath in Italy. What sum owes he the Jew? For me, 3,000 ducats. What? No more? Pay him 6,000 and deface the bond. Double 6,000 and then treble that. For a friend of this description shall lose a hair through Bassanio's fault. First, go with me to church and call me wife, and then away to Venice to your friend. <sighs> For never shall you lie by Portia's side with an unquiet soul. You shall have gold to pay the petty debt 20 times over. When it is paid, bring your true friend along. I made Nerissa and myself meantime will live as maids and widows. Come away, for you shall hence upon your wedding day bid your friends welcome. She'll marry cheer. Since you are dear bought, I will love you dear. But let me hear the letter of your friend. <clears throat> Sweet Bassanio, my ships have all miscarried. My creditors grow cruel. My estate is very low. My bond to the Jew is forfeit. And since in paying it, it is impossible I should live. All debts are cleared between you and I, if I might but see you at my death. Notwithstanding, use your pleasure. If you love, do not persuade you to come. Let not my letter. Oh, love. Dispatch all business and be gone. Since I have your good leave to go away, I will make haste. But till I come again, no bed shall e'er be guilty of my stay. No rest be interposed atwixt us twain. Jailer, look to him. Tell me not of mercy. This is the fool that lent out money gratis. Jailer, look to him. Hear me yet, good Shylock. I'll have my bond. Speak not against my bond. I've sworn an oath that I will have my bond. Thou calledst me dog before thou hadst a cause. But since I am a dog, beware my fangs. The duke shall grant me justice, I do wonder, thou naughty jailer, that thou art so fond to come abroad with him at his request. I pray thee, hear me speak. I'll have my bond. I will not hear thee speak. I'll have my bond and therefore speak no more. I'll not be made a soft and dull-eyed fool to shake the head, relent, and sigh, and yield to Christian intercessors. Follow not. I'll have no speaking. I will have my bond. It is the most impenetrable cur that ever kept with men. Let her alone. I'll follow her no more with bootless prayers. She seeks my life, her reason well I know. I oft delivered from her forfeitures that at many times have made moan to me. Therefore she hates me. I, I'm sure that the Duke will never grant this forfeiture to hold. The Duke cannot deny the course of law. For the commodity that strangers have with us in Venice, if it be denied, will much impeach the justice of his state, since that the trade and profit of the city consisteth of all nations. Therefore go, these griefs and losses have so baited me that I shall hardly spare a pound of flesh tomorrow to my bloody creditor. Well, jailer, on. Pray, God, Bassanio, come to see me pay his debt, and then I care not. Now, old Gobo, as I have ever found thee honest true, so let me find thee still. Take this same letter and use thou all the endeavor of a man in speed to Padua. See thou render this into my cousin's hands, Dr. Bellario, and look what notes and garments he doth give thee. Bring them, I pray thee, with imagined speed unto the trenet, to the common ferry, 
which trades to Venice, waste no time in words, but get thee gone, I shall be there before thee. Madame, I go with all convenient speed. Come on, Nerissa, I have work in hand that you yet not know of. We'll see our husbands before they think of us. Shall they see us? They shall, Nerissa, but in such a habit that they shall think we are accomplished with that we lack. I'll hold thee any wager when we are both accorded like young men. I'll prove the prettier fellow of the two. Why, shall we turn to men? I would have questions that if thou wert near a lewd interpreter <laughs> but come I'll tell thee all my whole device when I am in my coach which stays for us at the park gate and therefore haste away for we must measure 20 miles today what is Antonio here ready so please your grace I am sorry for thee. Thou art come to answer a stony adversary, an inhuman wretch incapable of pity, void and empty from any dram of mercy. Go one and call the Jew into the court. She is ready at the door. She comes, my lord. Make room and let her stand before our face. Shylock, the world thinks, and I think so too, that thou but leads this fashion of thy malice to the last hour of act. And then tis thought, thou'lt show mercy and remorse more strange than is thy strange apparent cruelty. We all expect a gentle answer, Jew. I have possessed your grace of what I purpose, and by our holy Sabbath have I sworn to have the due and forfeit of my bond. If you deny it, let the danger light upon your charter and your city's freedom. Y'all ask me why I rather choose to have a weight of carrion flesh than to receive 3,000 ducats. I'll not answer that. But say, it is my humor. Is it answered? So can I give no reason, nor will I not more than a lodged hate and a certain loathing I bear Antonio, that I follow thus this losing suit against him? Are you answered? This is no answer, thou unfeeling woman, to excuse the current of thy cruelty. I am not bound to please thee with my answers. I pray you, think you question with the Jew. You may as well go stand upon the beach and bid the main flood bait its usual height. You may as well do anything most hard as seek to soften that, than which what's harder. Her Jewish heart, therefore, I do beseech you. Make no more offers, use no farther means, but with all brief and plain conveniency. Let me have judgment and the Jew her will. For thy three thousand ducats, here is six. What judgment shall I dread? Doing were in six parts, in every part a ducat. I would not draw them. I would have my bond. How shalt thou hope for mercy, rendering none? What judgment shall I dread? Doing no wrong. You have among you many a purchase slave, which, like your asses and your dogs and mules, you use in abject and slavish parts because you bought them. You will answer, the slaves are ours. So do I answer you. This pound of flesh, which I demand of him, is dearly bought. Tis mine, and I will have it. If you deny me, fie upon your law. There is no force in the decrees of Venice. I stand for judgment. Answer, shall I have it? Upon my power I may dismiss this court, unless Bellario, the learned doctor, whom I have sent for to determine this, come here today. My lord, here stays without a messenger with letters from the doctor, new come from Padua. Uh, bring us the letter, call the messenger. What the hell is honey? Internet connection is ah, Jesus. Good, good cheer, Antonio. What, what man, courage yet. The truth shall have my flesh, blood, bones and all, ere thou shalt lose for me one drop of blood. I am a tainted weather of the flock. 
meetest for death. The weakest kind of fruit drops earliest to the ground. And so let me. You cannot be better employed, Bassanio, than to live still and to write mine epitaph. Came you from Padua, from Bellario? From both, my lord. Bellario greets your grace. Oh, be thou damned inexorable dog! And for thy life, let justice be accused. Thou canst rail the seal from off my bond. Thou but offendest thy lungs to speak so loud. Repair thy wit, good youth, or it will fall to cureless ruin. I stand here for law. This letter from Bellario doth commend a young and learned doctor to our court. But where is he? He attendeth here hard by. To know your answer, rather you'll him admit him. With all my heart. Some three or four of you go give him courteous conduct to this place. Meantime, the court shall hear Bellario's letter. <clears throat> your grace shall understand that at the receipt of your letter, I am very sick. But in the instant that your messenger came, in loving visitation was with me a young doctor of Rome. I acquainted him with the cause and controversy between the Jew and Antonio the merchant. We turned over, turned over many books together. He is furnished with my opinion, which bettered with his own learning, the greatness whereof I cannot enough commend, comes with him and my opportunity to fill up your grace's request in my stead. I beseech you, let his lack of years be no impediment to let him lack a reverend estimation for I never knew so young a body with so old a head. I leave him to your gracious acceptance, whose trial shall better publish his commendation. You hear the learned Bellario, what he writes? Ah, and here I take it is the doctor come. But give me your hand. Come you from old Bellario? I did, my lord. You are welcome. Take your place. Are you acquainted with the difference that holds this present question in the court? I'm informed thoroughly of the cause. Which is the merchant here and which is the Jew? Antonio and old Shylock both stand forth. Is your name Shylock? Shylock is my name. Of a strange nature is the suit you follow, yet in such rule that the Venetian law cannot impugn you as you do proceed. You stand within his danger, do you not? I, so she says. Do you confess the bond? I do. Then must the Jew be merciful? On what compulsion must I? Tell me that. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. It is an attribute to God himself. And earthly power doth sh then show like it's God when mercy sees of justice. Therefore, Jew, though justice be thy plea, consider this, that in the course of justice, none of us should see salvation. We do pray for mercy, and that same prayer doth teach us all to render the deeds of mercy. I spoke thus much to mitigate the justice of thy plea, which if thou follows, the strict court of Venice must give sentence against the merchant there. My deeds upon my head, I crave the law, the penalty and forfeit of my bond. Is he not able to discharge the money? Yes, yes. Here I tender it for him in the court. Yea, twice the sum. If that will not suffice, I will be bound to pay it ten times or on forfeit of my hands, my head, my heart. If this will not suffice, it must appear that malice bears down the truth. And I beseech you, rest with the law to your authority to do a great right. Do, do a little wrong and curb this cruel devil of her will. It must not be there is no power in Venice can alter a decree established. It will be recorded for a president and many an error by the same example will rush into the state. It cannot be. I pray you, let me look upon the bond. Here it is, most reverent doctor, here it is. Shylock, there's thrice thy money offered thee. An oath, an oath, I have an oath in heaven. Shall I lay perjury upon my soul? No, not for Venice. Why then? Thus it is, you must prepare your bosom for his knife. For the intent and purpose of the law hath full relation to the penalty, which here appeareth due upon the bond. It is so. Are there balance here to weigh the flash? 
I have them ready. Have by some surgeon, Shylock, on your charge to stop his wounds, lest he do bleed to death. Is it so nominated in the bond? It is not so expressed, but what of that? For good you do so much for charity. I cannot find it. Tis not in the bond. You, merchant, have you anything to say? But little. I am armed and well prepared. Give me your hand, Bassanio. Fare you well. Grieve not that I am fallen to this for you. Commend me to your honorable wife. Tell her the process of Antonio's end. Say how I loved you. Speak me fair in death, and when the tale is told, bid her be judge whether Bassanio had not once a love. Antonio, I, I am married to a wife, which is as dear to me as life itself, but, but life itself, my wife and all the world, are not with me esteemed above thy life. I would lose all, sacrifice them all here to this devil to deliver you. Your wife would give you little thanks for that if she were by to hear you make the offer. I have a wife whom I protest I love. I would she were in heaven so she could entreat some power to change this cursed you. Rightful huh. time, I pray thee, pursue sentence. A pound of that same merchant's flesh is thine. The court awards it, and the law doth give it, and you must cut this flesh from off his breast. The law allows it, and the court awards it. Most learned judge, a sentence, come, prepare. Tarry a little. There is something else. This bond doth give thee here no jot of blood. The words expressly are, a pound of flesh. Take then thy bond, take thou thy pound of flesh, but in the cutting it, if thou dost shed one drop of Christian blood, thy lands and goods are, by the laws of Venice, confiscate unto the state of Venice. Oh, upright judge, mark you, oh, Lord, a judge. <laughs> Is that the law? Thyself shalt see the act, for as thou urgest justice, be assured thou shalt have justice more than thou desirest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, learn a judge, mark you, learn a judge. <laughs> I take this offer then. Pay the bond thrice and let the Christian go. Here's the money. Soft, the Jew shall have all justice. Soft, no haste. He shall have nothing but the penalty. Oh, Jew, an upright judge, a learned judge. <laughs> Therefore, prepare thee to cut off the flesh. Shed thou no blood, nor cut thou less, no more, but just a pound of flesh. If thou cuttest more or less than just a pound, be it but so much as make it light or heavy in the substance, or the division of a twentieth part of one poor scruple. Nay, if the scale do turn, but in the estimation of a hair, thou diest, and all thy goods are confiscate. <clears throat> A second Daniel, a Daniel Jew. Now, infidel, I have you on the hip. Ha <laughs> ha. Why doth the Jew pause? Take thy forfeiture. Give me my principal and let me go. Oh, I have it ready for thee. Here it is. He hath refused it in the open court. He shall have merely justice and his bond. Shall I not have barely my principal? Thou shalt have nothing but the forfeiture to be so taken at thy peril, Jew. Why then the devil give him good of it. I'll stay no longer question. Terry, Jew, the law hath yet another hold on you. It is enacted in the laws of Venice. If it be proved against an alien that by direct or indirect attempts he seeks the life of any citizen, the party against the which he doth contrive shall seize one half his goods. The other half come to the privy coffer of the state, and the offender's life lies in the mercy of the duke only, against all other voice, in which pre predicament I say thou standest, for it appears by manifest proceeding that indirectly and directly too, thou hast contrived against the very life of the defendant, and thou hast incurred the danger formally by me rehearsed, down therefore and beg mercy of the duke. 
beg that thou mayst have leave to hang thyself. <laughs> and yet, thy wealth being forfeit to the state, thou hast not left the value of a cord. Therefore, thou must be hanged at the state's charge. That thou shalt see the difference of our spirits, I pardon thee thy life before thou ask it. For half thy wealth, it is Antonio's. The other half comes to the general state, which humbleness may drive unto a fine. I for the state, not for Antonio. Nay, take my life and all, pardon not that. You take my house when you do take the prop that doth sustain my house. You take my life when you do take the means whereby I live. What mercy can you render them, Antonio? A halter gratis, nothing else for God's sake. So please my lord, the duke, and all the court to quit the fine for one half of her goods. I am content, so she will let me have the other half in use to render it upon her death unto the gentleman that lately stole her daughter. Two things provided more, that for this favor, she presently become a Christian. The other, that she do record a gift here in the court of all she dies possessed unto her son Lorenzo and her daughter. She shall do this, or else I do recant the pardon that I late pronounced here. Art thou contented, Jew? What dost thou say? I am content. Clerk, draw a deed of gift. I pray you, give me leave to go from here. I am not well. Send the deed after me and I will sign it. Get thee gone, but do it. In christening shalt thou have two godfathers. Had I been the judge, thou shouldst have had ten more to bring thee to the gallows, not the font. <laughs> Sir, I entreat you home with me to dinner. I humbly do desire your grace pardon. I must away this night towards Padua, and it is meet I presently set forth. I am sorry that your leisure serves you not. Antonio, gratify this gentleman, for in my mind you are much bound to him. I stand indebted over and above in love and service to you evermore. He is well paid, that is well satisfied, and I, delivering you, am satisfied, and therein do account myself well paid. My mind was never yet more mercenary. I pray you, know me when we meet again. I wish you well, and so I take my leave. Yes, sir, I, of course I must attempt you further. Take some remembrance of us as a tribute, not, not as a fee. Grant me two things, I, I pray you, not to deny me and to pardon me. You press me far, and therefore I will yield. Give me your gloves, I'll wear them for your sake. And for your love, I'll take this ring from you. Do not draw back your hand, I'll take no more, and you and love shall not deny me this. <laughs> this stupid ring, this ring, good sir, alas, it is a trifle. I, I will not shame myself to give you this dumb stupid ring here. It's crazy. I will have nothing else but only this, and now methinks I have a mind to it. Yeah, yeah, about that. L look, there, there's more that depends on this than on the value. Uh, the, the dearest ring in Venice I will give you, and find it out by proclamation. Only for this, I pray you, pardon me. I see, sir, you are liberal in offers. You taught me first to beg, and now methinks you teach me how a beggar should be answered. See, oh, Look, good sir, this ring was given to me by my wife, and when she put it on, she made me vow that I should neither sell, nor give, nor lose it. That excuse serves many men to save their gifts, and if your wife be not a mad woman, and know how well I have deserved the ring, she would not hold out enemy forever for giving it to me. Well, peace be with you. My, my lord Bassanio, let him have the ring, let his deservings and my love withal be valued against your wife's commandment. Uh, okay, go, Gratiano, run, run and overtake him. Give him the ring and bring him, if thou canst, unto Antonio's house. Away, make haste. Get, get out of here. 
<sighs> Come, you and I will thither presently, and in the morning early, we will both fly toward Belmont. Come, Antonio. Why the Jews house out? Give him this deed and let him sign it. We'll away tonight and be a day before a husband's home. The seed will be well welcomed, Lorenzo. Sir, uh, you are well overtaken. My Lord Bassanio, upon more advice, hath sent you this ring and uh, doth entreat your company at dinner? That cannot be. His ring I do accept most thankfully, and so I pray you, tell him. Furthermore, I pray you, show my youth old Shylock's house. That will I do. Sir, I would speak with you. I'll see if I can get my husband's ring, which I did make him despair to keep forever. If thou mayest, I warrant. We shall have old swearing, but they do give the ring away to men, but we'll outface them and outswear them too. Uh, away! Make haste, thou knowest where I will tarry. Uh, come, good sir. Will you show me to this house? The moon shines bright in such a night as this, when the sweet wind did gently kiss the trees, and they did make no noise in such a night. Troilus, methinks, mounted the Trojan walls, and sighed his soul toward the Grecian tents, where crested lay the night. In such a night did Thisbe fearfully or trip the dew, and saw the lion's shadow air himself, and ran dismayed away. In such a night did Jessica steal from the wealthy Jew, and with an unthrift love did run from Venice as far as Belmont. In such a night did young Lorenzo swear he loved her well, stealing her soul with many vows of faith and ne'er a true one. In such a night did pretty Jessica, like a little shrew, slander her love and he forgave it her. In such an I would outnight you. Did nobody come, but hark, I hear the footing of a man. Oh, who comes so fast in the silence of the night? A friend. A friend? What friend? Your name, I pray you, friend. Old Govo is my name. And I bring word my mistress will before the break of day be here at Belmont. She doth stray about by holy crosses, whether she kneels and prays for happy wedlock hours. Who comes with her? None but a holy hermit and her maid. I pray you, is my master yet returned? Uh, he is not, nor have we not heard from him. But go we in, I pray thee, Jessica, and ceremoniously let us prepare some welcome for the mistress of the house. Hola, hola, woo, ha, ho, hola, hola. Uh, who calls? Hola, did you see Master Lorenzo? Master Lorenzo? Hola, hola. Uh, leave hollering, man, here. Hola, where, where? Here. Tell him there's a post come from my master with his horn. I'm full of good news. My master will be here ere morning. Sweet soul, let's in, and there expect their coming. And yet no matter, why should we go in? My friend, old Gobo, signify, I pray you, within the house your mistress is at hand, and bring your music forth into the air. How sweet the moonlight sleeps upon this bank. Here we will sit and let the sound of sounds of music creep into our ears. Soft stillness and the night become the touches of sweet harmony. Sit, Jessica. I am never merry when I hear sweet music.
music, hark. It is your music, madam of the house. Nothing is good. I see without respect, methinks it sounds much sweeter than by day. Silence bestows that virtue on it, madam. That is the voice, or I'm much deceived, of Portia. He knows me as the blind man knows the cuckoo by the bad voice. Dear lady, welcome home. We have been praying for our husband's healths. Which speed we hope the better for our words. Are they returned? Uh, madam, they are not, but there is come a messenger before to signify their coming. Go and Nerissa. Give orders to my servants that they take no note at all of our being absent hence. Nor you, Lorenzo, Jessica, nor you. Oh, your husband is at hand, I hear the trumpets. We are no telltales, madam, fear you not. This night methinks is but the daylight sick. It looks a little paler to the day. Such as the day is when the sun is hid. We should hold day with the Antipodes if you would walk in absence of the sun. Me give light, but let me not be light. For a light wife doth make a heavy husband and never be Bassanio so for me. But God sort all. You are welcome home, my lord. I thank you, madam. Give welcome to my friend. This is the man, this is Antonio, to whom I am so infinitely bound. You should in all sense be much bound to him, for as I hear, he was much bound for you. No more than I am well acquitted of. Sir, you are very welcome to our house. It must appear in other ways than words, therefore I scant this breathing courtesy. By yonder moon, I swear you do me wrong. In faith, I gave it to the judge's clerk. Would you were guilt that had it for my part, since you do take it, love, so much to heart? Quarrel? Already? What's the matter? About a hoop of gold, a paltry ring that she did give me, whose posy for all the world was like Cutler's poetry or wound a knife. <laughs> love me and leave me not. <laughs> What talk you of posy or of the value? You swore to me when I did give it to you that you would wear it till your hour of death and that you should lie with it in your grave. Or to blame. I must be plain with you to part so slightly with your wife's first gift. A thing stuck on with oaths upon your finger and so riveted with faith onto your flesh. I gave my love a ring and made him swear never to part with it. And here he stands. I dare be sworn for him he would not leave it, nor pluck it from his finger, for the wealth that the world masters. Now in faith, Graziano, you give your wife too unkind to cause a grief, and toward to me, I should be mad at it. Uh, oh, I were best to cut my left hand off and swear I lost the ring defending it. Um, about that, my lord Bassanio gave his ring away unto the judge that begged it and indeed deserved it too. And then the boy, his clerk that had took some pains in writing, he begged mine and neither man nor master would take aught but the two rings. What ring gave you my Lord? Not that I hope which you received from me. If I could add a lie into a fault, I would, I would deny it, but you see, you, you see my finger, it has not the ring upon it. it it's, it's gone, okay? It's gone, it's all gone. Even so void as your false heart of truth. By heaven, I will never come in your bed until I see the ring. Nor I in yours, till I again see mine. I'll die for it, but some woman had the ring. No, 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 no. By my honor, madam, by my soul, no woman had it, but a civil doctor which did refuse 3,000 ducats of me and begged the ring, the which I did deny him and suffered him to go displeased away. Even he that did uphold the very life of my dear friend, pardon me, good lady, for by these blessed candles of the night, had you been there, I think you would have begged of me to give the ring to the worthy doctor. Not that doctor, ere come near my house. Since he hath got the jewel that I loved, and that which you did swear to keep for me, 
I'll become as liberal as you. I'll not deny him anything I have. No, not my body, nor my husband's bed. Well, nor my shall, I am well sure of it. I'll have that doctor for my bedfellow. Don't you dare! No! Die his clerk. Therefore, be well advised how you do leave me to my own protection. Babe, what? Mm, well, do you so. Let not me take him then, for if I do, I'll mar the young clerk's pen. I am the unhappy subject of these quarrels. He shall be his surety. Give him this and bid him keep it better than the other. Here, Lord Bassanio, swear to keep this ring. By, by heaven, it's the same I gave the doctor. I had it of him. Pardon me, Bassanio, for let us ring the doctor and play with me. Pardon me, my gentle Graciano, for that same scrubbed boy, the doctor's clerk, in lieu of this last night did he lie with me. Why, this is like the mending of highways in summer, where the ways are fair enough. What, are we cuckold ere we have deserved it? Speak not so grossly. You were all amazed. Here's a letter. Read it at your leisure. It comes from Padua, from Bellario. There you shall find that Portia was the doctor, Nerissa there her clerk. Lorenzo here shall witness I set forth as soon as you and even but now returned. I have not yet entered my house. Antonio, you are welcome, and I have better news in store for you than you expect. Unseal this letter soon. There you shall find three of your argosies are richly come in harbor suddenly. You shall not know by what strange accident I chanced on this letter. I am dumb. Were, were you the doctor and I knew you not? Were you the clerk that is to make me cuckold? Aye, but the clerk that never means to do it, unless he live until he be a man. Sweet doctor, you shall be my bedfellow, and when I am absent, then lie with my wife. Sweet lady, you have given me life and living, for here I read for certain that my ships are safely come to road. <laughs> oh, Lorenzo, my clerk hath some good comforts too for you. Aye, and I'll give them him without a fee. There do I give to you and Jessica from the rich Jew, a special deed of gift after his death, all he dies possessed of. Fair ladies, you drop manna in the way of starved people. Morning. And yet I'm sure you are not satisfied of these events at full. Let us go in and charge us there upon interrogatories and we will answer all things faithfully. Let it be so. The first interrogatory that my Nerissa shall be sworn on is, whether till the next night had she rather stay or go to bed now, being two hours today. But were the day come, sh I should wish it dark that I were crouching with the doctor's clerk. <laughs> well, while I live, I'll fear no other thing so sore as keeping safe Nerissa's ring.
Alternatively, how does the sound of my voice make you feel? I know I like listening to it. Listen, I've been, I'm paying for your studio apartment right now. I put down the down payment on your Subaru Impreza. Oh, good Lord, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, but, 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 but she was just a girl. Oh, wait, go, is Gobo a priest? There's no way that the good old boys club will help me, so. No way. Also, I'm slashing everyone's health insurance at the company. What? It was our oak was on skin, okay? It was on, I asked for one chunky monkey, a singular one, and they won't give it to me. Instead, they're like, oh, they have some money. No, skin. It's 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 fine. To be fair, I did put all my money into Bitcoin and Enron, and she she didn't like me from the get go. So you know, I I have spent a lifetime uh, spewing just hatred and utter vitriol at uh, the Jewish people. So you know, maybe this is a little bit of a, a of, of irony, um, as the scholars would say. Hey, you, do you have anything to say? I'm not gonna try, but. Bassanio, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I'm genuinely head over heels in love with you, but every time I tell you, you just kind of say neat and ignore everything I say. Please, please, can you process? Do you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I am in love with you. Yeah, Antonio, that's pretty neat. Now look, I got a wife. Okay, so, uh... <laughs> yeah. Hey, was... with the power of editing... <clears throat> Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> no, no. I, I wish I had a way to fix it, but I genuinely don't know how. Matt, we're waiting on you. Matt, you must do it. <laughs> You're like, Matt. No, he's gonna his camera. Oh, fuck, I think I actually hit a shoe. <laughs> it's all about the he realism. He hit a shoe. Give me a sec, let me make sure I didn't put a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> this is three, two. <laughs> Take. I don't know, we'll figure it out. So scary. Just Where are your eyes? I have a concept. <laughs> yeah. have, it's like a Brita. I can be pouring a cup of water. Yeah. <laughs> Just a cup. In the bathtub! Porsche's class intro when you're ready. <laughs> oh, please dab, please dab. Antonio with a lowercase a. No! <laughs> Not again! Put it back! Put the caps locks! Full caps, let's go! There we go. Howard. Good. I was so close to getting away with it. No. What is happening? I just. I have no idea what you I just don't know. This is what we get for giving Matt creative reign. This is why Griffin's here to rein him in. <laughs> it doesn't work. I'm not doing the finger guns because that I don't want to make the same mistake as I did before because this is a serious scene. What the hell is honey? Internet connection is bad. Only Aiden has the power to end the scene. Did you not see the Muppets <laughs> Most Wanted music video I literally showed to you and Caroline? Great. It was an artistic choice. The look as sexy as possible. Well
the, <laughs> there was a flash, it was just apparition. <laughs> <laughs> Griffin haunts the Zoom call. Griffin, you just did. Griffin, okay. I'm the, I'm the theater ghost. <laughs> okay, Griffin, I'll let you come here for You're one. You're the phantom moment. of the opera. The Griffin of the opera. You're the clown ghost. <laughs> clown ghost. Mr. Clown I took ghost. a clowning class. You took a clowning class? You did? Yeah, over the- Matt, we literally talked about it over the summer. Why, Why do you need a clown class if you grew up in the circus? <laughs> well, I mean, there's always more you can learn. Uh <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? What is going on with you and Griffin? What? What is happening? No, now you're too short. My good spacing. I don't think they hear us at all. I <laughs> I think they hear us. They're just willingly ignoring us. What's going on? Also, the volume on this computer is really loud. It's kind of hard to hear. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, an easy fix for that is to turn the volume up. <laughs> there we go. Damn, Caroline. I, I just want to fill the scene. Okay. <laughs> we just can't see them. I'm like just now realizing that my dad's gonna see this. <laughs> I keep noticing the mats again. Just go, yeah. Okay, I think they're ready now. Okay, this is Careless Whispers. <laughs> that's okay, I think we have what we need. I think that's okay. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Caroline, I have a question. Yeah. Have you ever stopped recording in the past like 20 minutes? No. <laughs> ah, I this is one for the for real. Any second Matt will be ready to do the scene and then I need to be ready. So I figure if I just film the whole time, then we'll catch something. Yeah. I can edit together yeah. something. With the editing. <laughs> okay. I have some fun go work. <laughs> Show the burnt toast. I want both. Let's do the money. Okay. Hey, see, that logo. Hey, see, that logo. Um, I just wanted everyone to know that when I downloaded Graziano, he was this big. God, why did you take so long, skinny penis? <laughs> this, um, this, um, Liberal is gonna be so fucking weird. Okay, I'm setting the blooper cap at a hard eight minutes. It's over. Bye.